Yes, hi there, Rasa. This is Michael. I am the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at Stealth, the seven step system to pass the TOEFL IBT, and you do not need my lessons anymore. So uh, I hope you don't mind. I wanted to go over the uh, advice that you gave at my website. I'm going to be posting this uh, online for my students at the seven step system to pass a TOEFL IBT. So let me tell uh, some of my other, other students your particular story. So I think when I met you, your score was right around 80 or 81. And you actually had pretty good English skills, right? But you still didn't have the uh, goal of the 26 and the 24 on the uh, speaking and writing sections of the test because you want to be a pharmacist, if I remember correctly. So you have to have a pretty high score. So in about two and a half months, you actually got over uh, 100. However, you didn't get the required points, I think, in the speaking, right? So I think you were around 23 or 24 points on the speaking section of the exam. And uh, you studied some more. I think it was one or two months more. And you did it. Son of a gun, you did. You reached your goal. You got over 100. You got 26 I think in 27 on the speaking and writing sections of the exam and um, somebody else over my website made a comment and if I remember what it is it says it was from another student named Ross it says how was your experience what do's and don'ts do you suggest for new test takers if you could please reply me via email so then you put together some very, I think, very useful comments, which is why uh, I want to go over this right now. So here are your comments. These are straight from Rasa. Rasa uh, says, number one, determine your ability in reading, writing, listening, and speaking. What I have done is that I took a practice exam available on the ETS TOEFL IBT site. I got the scores which gave an indication about where I was standing at that point. Uh, so what he's saying is, is you need to establish some kind of benchmark. I mean, if you don't know what your weaknesses are, how can you get better? So that's his first uh, bit of advice. Number two, TOEFL scores vary for every inst institute. It's important to be aware of your goal scores. Yes, if you have no goals, how can you achieve them? So there is a saying that I saw one time years ago, Ross and everybody else watching this video. It was at Riverside Community College in uh, Riverside, California. It says, if you aim at nothing, you will hit the target every time. What that means is if you aim at nothing, of course you'll hit your target. You have no target. Anybody can do that. So it's important to uh, have your goals. So you say number three, it is important. Now, this is a good one. I thought this was very useful advice here. Not everybody has said this after they take the TOEFL exam. You say it is very important to practice in a noisy environment. ETS testing centers are full of noise as everyone have to speak to submit his or her response. So make sure you do not lose points because of the distraction and practicing in a noisy environment will solve your problem. You can play some discussion from YouTube in the background of the computer screen. It will create that kind of atmosphere. Now I know why when you recorded some of your speaking practice tests over at my website, I always heard some background noise. Makes a lot of sense. Okay, you say number four. Now anybody watching this video, Rasa had... In one of his IBT exams, he scored 29 out of 30 on the writing. In another writing section of another exam, he scored 27 out of 30 on the writing. So I would tell you that this guy is very intelligent. He is a great writer. Uh, I have read and scored many of his essays. Uh, he is excellent. Okay, so let's see what you say here. You say in the writing section, if you write the response comprised of at least 450 to 500 words independent 
uh, and the, I think that you mean in the independent writing task, then graders will compromise for some of the grammatical and spelling mistakes, and you always get a grade higher than 24. Now, I don't know about always. I'm not going to say I agree with you exactly on that, but what you're saying is, is it, it's true that the development and the organization of your ideas, I think, are more important than your grammar and your spelling. So if you can write... 450 to 500 words you're definitely showing that you know how to develop an idea so i agree with this i mean i'm not going to say you always get higher than 24 but i think rasa is giving a very good tip here you say even though ets requirement is lower 350 words uh, if you write a 350 word essay then you have to play an errorless game which is difficult so I, I see what you're saying there. So there's there's less room for error if your essay is shorter, and there's more room for errors if your essay is longer. You know what? That makes a lot of sense. I'm going to agree with that. So except for the sense, I'm not going to say that you always will get a higher score, but I think it's great that you can really develop uh, your ideas. That's what it's all about in writing anyway. Okay, you also say for integrated essay, there will always be a reading and listening passage contradicting with each other 90 percent chance both will contain three points of contradiction you will have to summarize each of them one by one use the sequencing method explained by michael yes i agree with that now what does he mean by sequencing method explained by michael i i have a lesson over at my website at the seven step system to pass a TOEFL ibt it shows you how to organize the information that you get uh, from the uh, reading and the listening passage. The sequencing method is a great way of uh, organizing your information. Okay, let's go to number five. You say for speaking, practice, review, practice, review, practice, review. It's the drill to get you the success. It is really like playing your favorite sport. You will fumble in the beginning, but ultimately will achieve the desired fluency. This is really good stuff. Now, how do we know that Rasa has practiced? This, I was telling my students just the other day, this is absolutely re remarkable. I mean, you guys got to see this. Okay, let me, I'm going to move this around so I can get right in the middle here. Okay. You guys see this? It says most active users at Voxypop, number one is Michael, me. Why? Because I have an online course. Students are constantly posting practice tests, making me busy. That's why. But look at this. Number two, three, four, five. Number six, the most six most active user at all of Voxypop is none other than Rasa. which is the same person as we're talking about right now. This guy, look at this. Rasa has been in 483 public discussions. What does that mean? That means that it's, it's very possible that he completed over 483 practice tests in order to improve his speaking and his pronunciation of American English. Now, how is that for working hard? Just that alone, this inspires me. This is absolutely incredible. Here's a person who didn't have, when I met him, his speaking skills were not that great, I'll be honest. As he says in his message, he had a lot of pauses, a lot of hesitations. Uh, he was constantly interrupting his ideas with certain kinds of conversation fillers and interruptions. But you know what? He just practiced, and he practiced, and he practiced, and he practiced, and finally, he reached his goal of 26 out of 30 on the TOEFL IBT right there. Now, if anybody who has a major pharmacy out there, if you guys are watching this, you need to hire this guy. If I had a pharmacist, if I had a company, I would hire Rasa. Why would I hire him? Look at this. This guy refuses to give up. He does not give up. He will become perfect in whatever he does in life. I'm telling you, this is evidence right here of how incredible this guy is. 
Think about it for a minute. Okay, let's go back to uh, what he said here. So obviously he said practice, practice, practice. And then you say, Michael emphasizes on pronunciation, but to me, presence of ums and ahs, pausing and hesitation is the main factor holding your score below 26 uh, to 24 in your speech. Eliminate them. Yes, you should. I agree. But if your goal is more, now this is interesting. Now, if you're lucky enough to still be watching this video, and if you're a pharmacist or a doctor or a dentist or a physical therapist, if you're needing to get the 26 on the speaking, pay attention. Here's what he says. He says, if your goal score is more than 26, then you would have to mention it in your speaking response. Personal experience, you can do it in questions one and two. So what he's saying is, let's say two heads are, let's say they're asking you a, a independent speaking task on the 12th. They're saying, um, do you think it's better to study alone or study in a group? So you might say, well, in my opinion, I think it's better to study in a group. So what Ross is saying is, as you're developing your response for that particular question, you might tie in your goal of 26. You might say, you know, if I can study in a group with other students, for example, when I'm preparing for the TOEFL, uh, I will have a better chance maybe of reaching my goal of getting 26 on the speaking if I practice with other students. You see what we're saying? So Rasa is saying that to mention this in the actual TOEFL IBT task so that other people can, the IBT human raters will know, they will know that you need to get that score. So he also says here, it says it will convey the message to the grader that you need 26, not 24 required by many colleges and universities. Greater sometimes do not know your situation that you need 26, not 24, as they mostly grade a student who wants to take admission in some school which requires 24. Now, my opinion here is, is I don't know, I'll be honest with you, I don't know if what Ross is saying will help you. It helped him. Uh, his TOEFL speaking score was around 23 or 24, and then he did what he's saying in this tip number five, and he did get 26. Uh, but we also know that Rasa was a very diligent person. He practiced speaking a lot, and he definitely was able to improve his speaking. And I believe that because of all the practice that he did, I think it's going to be beneficial for Rasa in his life. I mean, when he's, when he's a pharmacist and he's dealing with patients on a daily basis, they will be able to understand him much better now because of the practice that he did. Okay, so what I'm saying is, is I don't know if, if telling the Raiders will help or not personally. I don't know if it's going to make a difference, but it's not going to hurt. It definitely will not hurt anything. So I, I'm going to say go ahead and do what he's saying here. Tell them that you need to get 26. It can't hurt, right? You're putting the idea in their mind. Uh, okay, number six, he says, for reading and listening, use Michael's reading and listening exercises and buy any book of the TOEFL IBT. My favorite is the Delta's Key to the TOEFL IBT and the ETS Official Guide. Now, what he's saying is, is it's important to, when you're practicing your reading, you do need to take what's called TOEFL level reading practice test so that you can monitor and measure your progress and you can see how well you're doing. Now, the seventh thing that Rasa says, most importantly, evaluate yourself after recording your response on the Voxipop uh, or your computer. And let's go back again. My goodness. I think we can say that this guy is a man of his word. He was in 483 public discussions, and then he reached his goal. All right, so in the conclusion to this video, we just went over seven important things in order to get a good high, a high score on the TOEFL IBT. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, uh, especially 
if you're trying to get 26 and 24 in the speaking and writing sections of the exam, I hope that this information has given you some inspiration, some motivation, and some valuable information to help you continue in your progress to beat the TOEFL. Good luck, everybody.